a living mural on a canvas of soil, sprawling, diverse, enlarging its borders from one day to the next. The scope and abundance of the Earth's vegetation can, at times, seem almost limitless. We are surrounded by plants, and regardless of climate or geography, they continue to flourish, while quietly renewing the face of our planet. But for all of their numbers and enormous influence, when you look out over a hillside in the springtime, or up through a forest filled with towering giants, have you ever paused for even a moment to consider the countless small miracles that make all of this possible? During the next few minutes, we will travel through places both familiar and exotic on an extraordinary journey few have ever experienced. A journey vital to the survival and distribution of nearly 80% of the world's vegetation. The journey of the seed, bringing life to the earth. Right now, in a myriad of spots, Preparations for departure are well underway. Each of the thousands of particles on the anthers of this poppy is a passport for the journey. They are pollen grains, catalysts in the miracle of a seed's formation. As a honeybee collects and then transfers pollen to the center of the flower, a fascinating and rarely observed sequence of events is set into motion. Through the window of the microscope and time-lapse camera, let's take a closer look at a single pollen grain. Containing half of the genetic blueprint for a fully developed plant, the grain germinates and sends a thread-like tube downward toward the interior of the flower. Its destination, the poppy's ovary. Here, within an enclosed chamber, hundreds of ovules await one of creation's most awesome moments. Again, through the microscope, watch as the union of pollen and ovule is actually revealed. Guided by an uncanny sense of direction, the growing tube is drawn directly to the wall of a single unfertilized ovule, and the spark of life is ignited. As the flower fades, both the ovary and its contents mature, and the pod that remains silently declares the seed's formation is complete. For more than 100,000 different species of plants, a ripened cone, fruit, or pod can proclaim a similar miracle. And when the time is right, they will present to the world a living treasury of seeds. are packages of life, each holding the embryo of a living plant and the promise of a new generation. Yet to successfully release their enormous potential, they must first reach an environment suitable for growth. The stage is set for the seed to enter the world. The journey of seed to soil is a cornerstone of life on Earth, and often it is empowered by human hands. Driven by his need for food, clothing, and shelter, man has dispersed the seed and cultivated bountiful harvests 
wherever civilization has taken root. But beyond the realm of machines and human toil, a very different story unfolds. For it is here among the sometimes overlooked majority of the world's seed-bearing plants that the journey of life takes on its most natural and wondrous dimensions. Throughout nature, the simple act of a seed's dispersal can reveal far more than first meets the eye. They are designed to transport life, and in the provisions and the plan that make their journey possible, the creative power of God is uniquely displayed. To catch a glimpse, a man need look no further than to the grass at his feet. In a field of wild oats, the seed's provision for travel is both surprising and remarkably effective. For the next few moments, keep your eyes fixed on the slender filaments attached to the end of every seed. They're called awns, and each is a mechanism highly sensitive to changes in humidity. Watch closely as alternating cycles of moisture and heat are added to their environment. First, the damp air triggers a reaction, and the awns respond by winding up tightly. Then when the air dries out, they react to the change and unwind. After a few days of this continual twisting, both awn and seed work their way off the plant but being earthbound does nothing to change their response to the weather, and an amazing journey begins. The time-lapse camera speeds up the action, but what you are seeing really happens. The twisting awns not only propel the seeds along the ground, for good measure, they can actually plant them in the soil. And the journey of life proceeds, one hop at a time. In a patch of oxalis, the provisions for travel take on different, but no less ingenious dimensions. Standing less than an inch in height, this slender capsule could well be a resident of your own backyard. It is a fruit, formed from an oxalis flower, the storehouse for more than two dozen seeds. This time, Focus your attention on the outer layer of tissue surrounding each of them, as the time-lapse and high-speed cameras capture the essence of these living machines. When the seeds are ripe, their thin outer layer loses moisture and contracts. Simultaneously, an inner layer of tissue absorbs water, swelling to twice its normal size. Under tremendous pressure, the outer layer splits violently, squeezing the seeds through slits in the fruit at speeds exceeding 30 miles per hour. Life is literally shot into the world. For the Scotch broom, native to Western Europe and common throughout the Pacific coast of North America, the mechanisms for dispersal are even more dynamic. 
When the plant's yellow flowers die back, the pods that remain are gradually prepared to distribute their seeds. Throughout the summer months, the maturing pods are exposed to prolonged periods of heat. As the weeks pass, they dry out, and extreme tension builds within their walls. It is the prelude to one of nature's most explosive overtures. The force of the Scotch broom's exploding pods can launch its seeds more than 50 feet. Animals and seeds. Where their kingdoms collide, the scope of the journey grows. Children chase a dog through a hillside of foxtails with every footstep and stumble. The plant's clinging seeds are collected and moved. A gallinule walks along a river's edge. For hundreds of seeds buried in the muddy shore, the bird's huge feet provide a convenient source of transportation. And the barbed pods of the cocklebur await the approach of a passing steer. When their hooks take hold, the seed hitchhikes a ride to a new location, sometimes miles away. The possibilities are endless, and each is something more than a mere accident or chance occurrence. The seed was created to be dispersed, and with the aid of a dog, cow, or a hungry bird on the branch of a thistle, the journey of life and God's intricate plan continue to carry on. Perhaps nowhere else on Earth is the magnitude of the animal-seed relationship more visible than the Amazon rainforest of Brazil. Here, within a canopy of trees, birds, mammals, and fish combine to distribute seeds throughout one and a half million square miles of dense vegetation and waterways. Many of the seeds rely on two common and effective provisions for travel. They are designed to resist digestion and packaged in colorful fruits. Appealingly advertised, they are often swallowed whole with the fruit and later carried away in the stomach of a bird to be dispersed unharmed with its waste. The trees are loaded with fruit, but the rivers which flood around their trunks carry little food. A piranha lurks in hiding. This notorious meat eater will also consume large amounts of fruit. And with a little help from a spider monkey, adequate supplies are always available. Later, like the birds, the piranha will migrate hundreds of miles, passing undamaged seeds along the way. Daily, through a cycle of basic interactions, life is dispersed throughout the most complex forest on Earth. And then, 
there are even more direct ways of moving seed to soil. colony of harvester ants can cut, retrieve, and move more than 7,000 seeds in a single day. But not all of them get carried back to the nest. Minute specks cast into an immense and hazardous world. Of the millions of seeds that are dispersed every moment, only a few will survive to successfully release the life they hold. There is a paradox that dominates this struggle to endure. Potentially, nature's forces can destroy the seed. And yet, often their devastating power will play a crucial role in sustaining the miracle of ongoing life. This continuing drama of trial and survival is revealed in the odyssey of the coconut. Weighing as much as 20 pounds, this remarkable vessel is constructed to withstand journeys of more than 1,000 miles in the open sea. One of the world's largest seeds, the coconut is well equipped for the hardships of aquatic travel. The key to the coconut's survival lies in its air-filled outer husk. By itself, the edible seed would become waterlogged and sink after only a few days. But when encased in a buoyant, fibrous container, it can remain afloat for more than a year, its embryonic plant protected from the deadly salt water. The conditions are severe. Yet the coconut is not only designed to survive the ocean's waves and currents, it can ultimately depend on them to transport life to a distant shore.
patrols the coastlines along three continents, moving day and night with a quiet, steady resolve. Probing, searching for a place to anchor on a voyage that can span an ocean. Let's enter the world of this mysterious craft, for there is much to be learned from its journey of life. Fringing shorelines from West Africa to South America stand colonies of one of nature's most unusual trees, the red mangrove. Botanically, they're known as halophytes, or plants that thrive in salt water. This rare quality is vital, not only to the trees, but also to the exotic array of wildlife that finds sanctuary among their limbs and roots. By flourishing where few plants could ever survive, the mangrove has become the foundation of a wondrous ecological system. But perhaps even more fascinating than the wildlife it supports is the way the tree perpetuates its own existence. This spear-like plant holds a key to the mangrove's future and a secret of its past. Reaching a length of six to 12 inches, it actually sprouts and grows from the seed of a small leathery fruit while still attached to the tree. When released, its chances of taking root in an unstable environment of mud and tidal currents are much greater than those of a seed. But it's when the seedling fails to take hold beneath the tree that the mangrove's real journey begins. Like the coconut, mangrove seedlings are prepared for the hardships of extended travel. The young plants can remain viable for more than a year. And when carried by equatorial currents, they have been known to cross the Atlantic Ocean. Gradually, its base absorbs water, but the seedling merely adjusts its posture and continues on its way. After months adrift, the beginnings of a root system appear and eventually the intrepid seedling runs aground in a shallow sandbar. The young tree matures quickly, and as its roots develop, enough silt and debris are collected to form large masses of new land. And as the years pass, both the mangrove colony and the shoreline it creates move further and further out to sea. Travelers in the wind, set free to embark on their journey of life. The pathways become more numerous, God's provisions increasingly diverse.
suspended by an updraft and hundreds of delicate hairs, the seed of a milkweed is but one of many travelers carried by the winds in the quest for a place to grow. In a cluster of dandelions, the preparations for flight are complete in a matter of days. The view from the head of a dandelion puff. Surrounded by a forest of parachutes and seed pods, the challenges to survival seem distant and insignificant. But as we move outside this intricate realm, a very different world comes into view. A world filled with vegetation and intense competition for a suitable place to grow. Here the success of a seed's dispersal is often measured by the distance it can be moved from its parent plant. On a rainy morning, the moist, heavy air makes extended flight all but impossible. The dandelion's parachutes respond to the conditions. Each is equipped with a moisture reactor, another elaborate mechanism sensitive to humidity. By closing the chutes, the possibility of a short and unsuccessful takeoff is minimized. But later in the day, when conditions for flight improve, the reaction is quickly reversed. And like hundreds of gossamer wings, the open chutes stand poised for even the slightest breeze. There is a subtle beauty in the alliance of wind and the seed-bearing plant, a beauty sometimes overshadowed by the magnitude of nature, but when revealed, can open new doors to the gallery of God's handiwork. This bougainvillea is designed with clusters of vibrant red wings that will carry its seeds on a journey spanning both air and land while the appropriately named paper bag plant produces tissue-thin sacks to hold and disperse its tiny seeds. Blowing freely across the open plains of the world, the tumbleweed and wind-aided travel have become synonymous. This familiar symbol of the untamed frontier has left an indelible mark on every continent, and the accounts of its dispersal are legendary.
Less than a century ago, the tumbleweed did not exist in North America. Then in the spring of 1886, a handful of Russian immigrants landed in New York Harbor. They were farmers by trade, and the promise of fertile soil and a land grant soon drew them to the Dakota prairies. There, with a supply of flax seeds carried from their homeland, a crop was planted that would change the face of a continent. By the harvest, another immigrant had claimed America as its own, for intermixed in the bags of imported flax were some seeds of another species. Inadvertently, the tumbleweed had also been sown, and the rest is history. From its accidental beginnings in South Dakota, the plant quickly spread throughout the western United States and Canada. Spherical and lightweight, a mature tumbleweed can hold more than a quarter of a million seeds, and the single root, anchoring it to the soil, will decay and weaken until the precise time its enormous cargo is ripe and ready to travel. Success or failure in the journey of life can often hinge on two factors. The seed's capacity to travel freely. And their ability to endure the hazards along the way. For the winged seed of the knobcone pine, the challenges to survival are matched only by the brilliance of God's provisions to meet them. Its story begins in an Oregon forest with a humble but extraordinary creation. The knobcone pine produces what are known to be the world's hardest and most protective cones. Growing in clusters around limbs or directly from the trunk, these curiously shaped vessels possess a quality shared by few others. They refuse to open and release their seeds from one year to the next. Instead, like impenetrable fortresses, they remain sealed, strong enough to withstand the blows of a hammer and a forest of seed-hungry predators. Even time and weather fail to take their toll as each cone's vice-like grip holds fast, often for decades. In all of nature, only one force is strong enough to break their hold. searing heat of a forest fire triggers an amazing chain of events and the cones begin to crack. By opening only partially and emitting a gaseous vapor, most of the seeds are insulated from the killing flames less than an inch away. Only when the fire has passed will the charred cones open fully. The miracle 
of a forest's rebirth then takes its course. power to restore a devastated forest. They bring life to a barren shore. Daily, they renew, enrich, and sustain our planet while ensuring the survival of the vast majority of its vegetation. Into seeds, God imparts a full measure of his creative power and then sets them free on a journey to carry life to the earth. During the past few minutes, we have turned to nature and watched as a myriad of seeds have been dispersed into the world. Each goes out with but one purpose, to reach an environment suitable for growth, a place that will receive and nurture the life it contains. But this story does not end on a lake shore or a hillside. For there is another seed on a very different journey, and it has the power to transform not acres of soil, but the hearts of men. That seed is the Word of God, and daily through the Bible, the eternal life it holds is dispersed into the world. every man, woman, and child, God's word carries the potential to renew, enrich, and sustain a barren and empty life, any life. Right now, no matter who or where you are, the Word of God goes out with the power to change the entire course of your existence. And like the seed of a wildflower or a blade of grass, it will flourish wherever its truth is received and nurtured. The only question that remains is your response. If you honestly desire to know God, to experience all that he offers freely to each of us, then open your heart to his word and allow it to release within you eternal life. Astronauts are often accused of not being able to express themselves very well when they come back about really what it's like to be up in space. And I think that because when you look down at the Earth, you know, the word that comes to my mind is awesome. You just are so completely surrounded by the majesty of God and His creation. How beautiful are your works, O Lord. See how the Master Creator reveals Himself through the glorious miracle of creation. Discover planet Earth. Be amazed by God's unique and diverse animal kingdom. And realize the miracles of human life. The wonders of God's creation. Three award-winning videos that present dramatic evidence of God's creative majesty. Brought to you only by Moody Video. The heavens declare the glory of God, 
The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Space. Vast. Brilliant. Mysterious. A frontier which we have only begun to explore. <laughs> 